So I'll record this session. If anybody wants to review it again or share it with maybe 4-H members who couldn't be on tonight, they're more than welcome to. Just let me know and I will send that out. Um, we did get a couple um, volunteers and parents who were had another conference call tonight and so they've already asked for the recording and we'll share that with them. I also want to um, let you know that I wanted to physically show you that our record book is not online, okay? So if you, and I'll go into detail where you can find it and everything. So the first thing I wanna show you is the record book before I turn on my PowerPoint. It is a physical record book, okay? It is not a online record book. It is not a um, digital or app. There are things that can help you that are digital and apps and computer programs, but our record, actual record book is a physical book that you have to turn in. Um, I do suggest you print out at least one, if not two copies, bind, put it in some type of binder so that you have it and put it somewhere that's easy to find. That's the key thing so that when you're doing stuff, you can quickly find it and um, pull it out and put stuff. We try to keep ours here at our house on the desk um, top, right, right about on the top of the desk, easy to find. So when something happens or, or we need to add information, it's there. So let's, let me share my screen so y'all can see my PowerPoint. And Miss Erica, if you don't mind watching the chat box and let me know if I have any questions. If y'all have any questions, please, please, please feel free to interrupt me, turn on your mic, interrupt me and ask me. I know there's a lot of stuff that I'll be um, presenting tonight and y'all may have questions. So feel free to, to ask me and I'll be happy to answer them the best I can. Okay, so first of all, I think I know everybody, but if I haven't met you, my name is Katie Shaw. Um, I'm a 4-H um, equine specialist at Clemson University and with the help of Chris, Dr. Christine Vernon, we both provide the 4-H horse project and all the events and activities on the state level for that. So today we're going to cover the 4-H record book. Like I said, it's a physical book um, and so the first question I always get from kids and, and volunteers and parents is why in the world do I need to do a record book? So the easiest thing is that there are clubs, county, and even state awards. Um, depending on your club and depending on your county or what awards are available. But on the state level, we offer state awards. Um, we typically give at least top five um, for junior and senior, and then all Clever Buds receive a um, participation ribbon for their participation. The other thing is that when you become a senior, first and second place win a uh, monetary prize. So this year it was um, I'm, I'm trying to make sure I don't tell you the right wrong amount. I think it was 750 and 250. Um, and that depends each year based on the sponsorships and we are able to get as a state program. But um, we will try to make sure every single year the senior record book contest has some type of cash prize. Um, we all, it's also important to do a record book because it keeps up with your memories. I laugh and tell the story that sometimes I'll be like, what is that girl I used to be in 4-H with? I ran into her, what's her name? Um, and I can go back and look at my record books and I actually have my record books from when I was a kid and see who they were. The other thing is maybe when you get ready for a career, depending on what your career is, it might also help you write your resume. A lot of times I've gone back and said, oh, I want to include something on my resume, but I can't rem I know I did it my junior and senior year in high school, I think, but I can't remember um, when I won that scholarship or when I won that award. So I can go back and look at my record book really easily. The third thing it does is it helps you keep annual records it all, and that applies for your 4-H portfolio. So all of our big scholarships in 4-H in South Carolina are attached to the 4-H portfolio. A 4-H portfolio covers your whole 4-H career, whereas a record book is just one year. So when it comes time, when you become a senior or maybe even an older junior and you start putting together your 4-H por portfolio, it's really easy if you have a record book for every single year you're in 4-H, because then you just take those record books out. We store ours in a filing cabinet here at the house. We take, we'll be able to take them out and we'll be able to literally just copy that information straight into a portfolio, easy and done. What is hard is when you don't have a record book or you don't have that information written down and you're trying to remember what you did two, three, four or more years back and what kind of help um, events you went to and awards you got and it's, it's it becomes really difficult so that is the why we do record books the next thing is how so 
our record books are divided, like I said, in three age divisions. So Clover Buds, five to eight years old, juniors, nine to 13 years old, and seniors, 14 to 18. Each of these age divisions have specific record books for them. They're just slightly different to make them age appropriate. So we don't expect a Clover Bud to do the same level of record book that a senior 4-H member does. And to find these record books, you go to our website. Um, the easiest is www.clemson.edu backslash 4-H backslash horse. And then you go down, if you scroll down on the right side, you'll see where it says record book. And you click right there and it'll give you all the record books for each age division. So like I said, go ahead and print those things out, um, have them ready to get started. Now, before we get into how we do them and the timeline and everything, I wanna go over some really important tips when it comes to record books. The first and the main thing is please read through the directions and read through the whole book before you get started. It's, um, it's hard when you look at a book and you know that someone obviously didn't read through the whole thing or didn't read all their directions and the book could have been just a little bit better if they just read the directions or read that in the book that that would go somewhere else. The other thing is it's handwritten. And when I say handwritten, I mean by the child, not by parent, not by volunteer. I understand some people, including myself, have learning disabilities, or maybe we're, they're younger youth, there's clover buds, you're thinking, oh, their handwriting's atrocious. We understand that. Handwriting can be rough, but handwriting tells us that it was done by the youth and not a parent. And so that's what we want to see. So we want to them to do their best to write clearly and legibly. And there's some tricks to that. If you have younger youth, um, sometimes it's good to have a parent book and a youth book and the parent fills it out and spells each word. Um, so when my kids were five, I'd say, okay, the question asked and I'd ask them and they would tell me in their words and I would write it out because spelling was our main problem. So then they could look at the parent book and copy it right into their youth book. And so that just makes it a little bit easier on them. The other thing is for older youth, it's sometimes good to have a working copy where they're writing in it all the time and then, then go back right at the end of the year um, before they turn it in and rewrite on a new book and make sure that it's really neat. Now that is very time consuming, but when it gets really competitive, that can help you get, get the extra edge. If you choose to use a pen, make sure it's only one color. We don't wanna see multiple colors. Um, just because it gets a little difficult to read. And I say stick with black and blue. If you get into the multiple colors, pink, teal, I know my kids love to use those, but they're hard to read. And the record book is a lot of information for someone to read. Also, pencils are acceptable. Don't feel like you can't use a pencil. Our kid, my kids, you definitely use a pencil. I don't want to fight with pens. Um, so don't feel bad. Use a pencil if you need to. That way you can't erase. All the information of photos must be compiled throughout the year. So we don't want to see all the information being put in at one time. And we'll go over that in the deadlines a little bit further. We want to make sure everything is secure in the book. So if I shake that book, nothing falls out. Because the last thing you need is to turn that book into the county level. And then it comes, gets hauled to me. And then I haul it back to the agent. And sometimes we, things, if they, fall, they aren't secure, they may fall out and lose them. And we don't want that to happen. So is, your responsibility to make sure everything is really secure in that book and doesn't fall out. And if you have questions, be sure to ask your agent. That's what your county agent is there for, to ask and answer any qu question you may have for them. And do your own work. We don't want to see anybody doing the work for youth in their record book. It is something for them to do. It's something for them to take pride in. And lastly, review the score sheet before you get started. That'll give you a lot of tips and help you understand what we're looking for when we're scoring these record books. And the score sheet is in the very last page of the book. So now, let's go into the important dates. G your book runs through the whole calendar year. So for our 2020 book, it started January 2020 and will end this coming December 30th. All the information will be in those dates. But now we're gonna, we understand you're in school and kids are in school and it's difficult to finalize those books on the de last day on December 30th, especially so close to Christmas. So we're gonna give you to January 31st to get it into the county office and that'll be January 31st, 2021. So the following January 31st is when the actual record books and they're always due to the county office. So where do you start? That's the first thing. Oh, I'm excited, I got my record book, now what do I do? So the main three, four sections that I suggest you get started with as soon as you get to, to get your record book are all about me, goal setting, 
animal identification and gaining knowledge. No matter if it's the first day, January 1st, you can work on all four of those sections the first day you get your book. So let's go through those individually. The first page is all about me. This is the easiest page for all the youth because it is nothing but general information about them. The start date for the project, you'll see that on there. That's gonna be January 1st. The end date is gonna be December 30th, okay? So it runs a whole, whole year. The most difficult and the number one thing that are left off in record books is the signatures. So we wanna see the 4-H member's signature, the parent's signature, and the extension agent. Please do not leave off any of those signatures. I understand that a five-year-old cannot sign their name, so do their best just to print their name is perfectly fine. Once again, we understand age appropriateness, and so if, if your child can't write in cursive, don't stress, just have them print it, um, but they do need to write their name there. And this is just saying that they agree that the book was done by them and that they did participate in the project. The next section is that you're going to work on is goal setting, okay? Goal setting, you want to have at least three goals. Goals are what you want to do for the upcoming year or achieve over the next coming year. So let's go Cloverbud. Maybe you want to learn the 4-H pledge or maybe you want to learn the colors of horses. You're going to put that in this goal section. The next thing you're going to do is you're going to write the action. So what can I do? Okay, well, I'm going to print out the 4-H pledge and I'm going to practice it in front of my my parents and then maybe try to give it in front of my club or I'm going to print out all the different horse colors and I put them on the index cards and I'm going to study them and then lastly any challenges you might run into maybe running out of time right now with COVID the pledge might be difficult to get to your club because you're not having in-person meetings so you could list all the challenges you could think of with those goals keep in mind if we have three boxes for goals we want three sets of goals and make them realistic and achievable. And we do not expect a clover bud to learn the, to the skeletal system of a horse. Like that's not something we expect from a clover bud. So don't think that they have to be, um, we're not judging them about how difficult they are. We're judging them, are they age appropriate? Are they realistic and achievable for that child? And did they think through this when they were um, working on this? The next section that is easy to get done on the first day is animal identification. A child does not have to own a horse to, to do a record book, book, but we want them to, they can own it, they can borrow it, they can lease it. It can even be a horse they're taking riding lessons on or a horse that the neighbor, their neighbor owns and they're gonna keep records on. But keep in mind, they need to be able to get information on a regular basis about that horse. We do want to see a side profile picture of the horse in this section and fill out everything. Even if you don't know information, put NA, which means not applicable or does, or just put do not, does not apply. For instance, if, um, if you're thinking about my daughter's horse is a Mustang, well, we don't have a registration number because she's not registered. Um, so we wouldn't have that. So we would just put does not apply. If maybe you don't know the breed or it's a mixed breed, put mixed breed or um, it's a quarter horse, walking horse. I don't know, a combination. So we want to, you to fill out every section, even if it means that you need to put does not apply. That lets us know that you didn't just leave it blank. You actually, you know, there's not information to put there. Then there's gaining knowledge. This looks different for every single age division. So Cloverbud looks different than junior and junior looks different from senior. This is where we want to see that you doing some, you're doing some research, you're learning about horses in some aspect. Um, the one here is for seniors, it's the skeletal system of a horse. It would be from seniors. We want them to research the topic, find the answers, but we also want to make sure that those resources are reliable. So any website that ends in .edu is a good re, um, website, is a good rule. But you can kind of look and have your parents or um, club, mem uh, club leaders help in trying to find reliable resources and finding the answer to these. Um, this section, like I said, is different for each age, and it also will change every couple years. So that's why it's important that each year to print out a new book, because each year, it, it, Typically every three years, we change this knowledge gain section because we don't want anybody doing the same one over and over and over. 
So that's all the sections you can do on day one. These are the sections of the record book that need to be worked on throughout the year. So that includes your 4-H horse activities and event involvement, animal health, project experience, leadership and citizenship slash community service experience and project finances. That needs to be done throughout the year. So you're gonna work on that all year long. So the first one is the South Carolina 4-H Course activity and event, event involvement. And this is one of the first pages in your book it is you just simply check the box that you attended that event, put the date, and then you'll get points based on those events added to your final score of your record book. So let's say you get a 75. If you did five of these events, that means you can get up to um, 10 points added to your record book just by being in your involvement in the 4-H horse project. Now, don't worry if you do not meet the age requirements. For instance, if you're a junior 4-H'er, you're not old enough to go to State 4-H Congress or to be a State 4-H Horse Ambassador. Do not panic, panic about that because nobody in your age division is old enough to do that. We do leave some blanks for other activities and events, which can include any state and regional. When I mean regional, that means multiple states or national horse event that is open to all youth. So for instance, um, 4-H Southern Regional Horse Championships, Eastern National 4-H Roundup, but also maybe you go to a breed show or you um, are doing uh, another type of a social horse association and you qualify for the state event or the national event or regional event. You can put those down and we will, based on the level of event, we'll decide how many points you get. Um, on average, we'll give you one to two points depending on the event, but those are additional points you also can get. We want to see involvement not only in 4-H, but also outside 4-H in horse activities. The next section is animal health, and this is just where you're keeping track of the horse's health. A examples include worming, vet visits, farrier, farrier visits, medicines given, supplements, and this page can be duplicated as many times as you need it. So if you have, for instance, I call our house the geriatric horse farm. So we have a lot of supplements, a lot of vet visits, um, a lot of um, medical care for our horses because they're all over the age of 25, all three of them. So we, this page is, could be pretty detailed for us. Whereas if I had a much younger horse, it might not be as, um, as lengthy. Next is project experience. And this is experiences related to horse project in, with or without 4-H. And once again, if you're going to a breed association or you have a meeting or a show, those count as well. Um, club 4-H meetings, shows, clinics, workshops, time spent working with your animal, given a horse presentation, all of that counts as project experience. And once again, this page is another one that can be duplicated over and over and over. We also ask, you know, if you got anything, did you win anything? Did you learn anything? Um, we want to know, you know, what the outcome of those events. So if you went to a workshop, to, like this workshop tonight, you could put down there and you would put, you know, I learned how to complete a 4-H horse record book better. Or maybe you went to a clinic and you learned how to do a flying lead change. We want to see where you, you've learned as you've gone to events related to the horse project. Once again, they don't have to be 4-H events. They just have to be related to anything horses. The next is two sections, but it's on one page and it's the leadership experience and then the citizenship slash community service experience. And you wanna know why we say citizenship slash community service. For some reason, there's a battle across the nation on whether it should be called citizenship or community service. So we put both. So these are experiences once again, within or out of 4-H. So leadership examples can be helping um, a younger youth, leading pledges at your club meetings or other events, giving a presentation. That brings up a good a, a point that I wanna make. Giving a pres horse presentation can not only go in project experience, but it also can go in leadership experience because it goes with both. Another one is representing your county or state at an event. If you represent your county at junior teen weekend, then that can go under leadership and it can go under project. You can duplicate information in multiple sections. And then outside things could be like serving on um, student council. Um, maybe you are have some leadership role at your church. Anything like that can go under leadership. 
Examples of the community service are picking up trash, school canned food drives, maybe a community service project with your 4-H horse club or um, county, and then also church community service projects are also excellent to put in this section. This page can also be duplicated if needed. Now, I will say that we expect a junior and senior to have more information than a Cloverbud. Cloverbud's not gonna have too much leadership experience because they're still young and learning, but a junior, we should start to see a little bit more, and then senior, we should de definitely see a decent amount of leadership in community service. Next section is project finances, and this is broken up in different sections. So I'm gonna go through them kind of individually and just give you examples. This can be done two ways overall. You can do it on an individual animal or you can do it on a herd. And the reason way we, the, and by herd, we mean, let's say like at my house, we have three horses. So when I go buy feed, I'm not buying feed for one horse, I'm buying it for all three. So you can record this. It's just that on the first page, it asks you individual animal or herd. That means, are you keeping finances for all the horses at your house? Are you keeping finances for just your, the one horse. That just makes it a little bit easier when it comes to, um, when it comes to doing finances for you as well as your parents when you start asking them, how much should we spend on feed or how much do we spend on this? So the first thing it asks you is assets. By assets, we mean anything you already own. So if you already own a trailer or you already own your horse or your tack, you can go ahead and list that and it's about value. We want to see that you understand that there's already an investment been made before this project even starts. And as time develops, you'll start to see that that investment gets bigger and bigger because you'll have more and more assets. The next thing is equipment and expenses. And this is new buckets, new brushes, tack, anything new you buy. Then there's feed exp expenses. And I don't just mean grain. I mean hay. I mean supplements. Anything you, um, you buy to feed your animal. Next is health expenses. Once again, vet visits, barrier costs, medicine costs, all that is included when we talk about health expenses. Then comes other expenses. So anything that doesn't fit in those will fit here. So 4-H membership dues, breed association dues, gas your parents pay for you to go to a club meeting or show, or maybe travel costs, show fees. This can actually get very lengthy and all these pages can be duplicated. So depending on how active you are is how many things you might need to put in. And then lastly is income. I hate to say it, but in the horse project, we don't see a ton of income, but there may be, you may sell a horse or you may sell a, maybe a saddle you outgrew or some old um, show clothes. So we want to see where you've sold something and you've made a little bit of money. Um, I will say, I put in big orange, don't forget to do the math. And what I mean by that is, at the end of these each, each section, it has you add up all your expenses, and then it has you um, taking your income versus your expenses to see if you have a profit or a loss. So a loss would be a negative number, and a profit would be a positive number. It's okay to have a loss. We understand in the horse project, majority of the time, you're losing money. So we, it's okay to lose money when it comes to that math. The last section are things you do at the end. So things that you do last part of finishing your record book. So these things can be done towards the end of the project or even during that gap between December 30th and when you turn the record book on January 31st. And that's reflecting on your goals, the 4-H project story, and 4-H supporting materials. So the first is you're reflecting on your goals. So you remember at the beginning, we talked about setting your goals. So here should be the exact same three goals. But now you're gonna tell me, update, you on, update me on your progress. So did you achieve it? If you did, that's great. Put how you achieved it. If you didn't, that's also okay. But tell me why you didn't achieve it. This year, 2020, is a great example of how you could have might not achieved almost all your goals. Because a lot of stuff got canceled. So if your goal was to maybe um, place in, at state show and that and work harder to do, um, on with your horse, and that didn't happen. So you need to write that out. And then the last section is tells me, what would you do different? Would you change any way? Would you done anything different about these goals to help you achieve them or achieve them better? Um, so we just want to know an update on the goals. 
Then we have our 4-H project story. In the record book, there is an outline. This must be handwritten and it can be written on notebook paper. All we say that is a have to, it has to be a th eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper. So if you're like me and you need the lines, write it on a notebook paper, however you works best for you. Now for clever buds, they actually have questions. They just go through and answer because we understand that they're not ready usually to write an actual story. Juniors, your story needs to be at least one page long and then seniors need to be at least three page longs. But the best way is to follow this outline. You can actually do it in paragraph form and truly go through the outline and answer all the questions and that'll help you write your story. Um, for seniors, I really wanna see something meaningful. I wanna see some takeaway. And then always include your future plans, like looking forward, I plan on doing this or next year's project, you know, all this experience has led me to do this. So give me some looking what's happening next. For seniors, if you're about to graduate, maybe that's your career. And it's okay to say, I don't want a career in, the, in any horse field. It could, I remember one of the best 4-H stories I ever read said, thanks to my 4-H horse experience, I realize that I do not want to be in the horse profession. I just want to be, um, have it as a hobby. So I'm going into nursing because I really like taking care of people. And, and I've learned that because, you know, when somebody fell off at a, at a show, um, I like taking care of them, making sure that they're, they're taken care of. So it's okay to, to say your next goal is not 4-H or, or horse related. The last tip is to let your parents, your club leader, and your English teacher read over this. Um, your parents and your club leader are going to be able to check and make sure that you use the right terms and the right wording and when it comes to horses. And then your English teacher is going to check you for grammar and spelling. So your English teacher might not know what... Um, you know, a something a flying lead changes, but your parent and club leader will know, but they all, but they will know um, grammar and spelling. So it's good to get all three to look over your 4-H story before you turn it in. Next is your project supporting materials. This is pretty much use favorite part. So this is pictures, um, certificates, drawings, newspapers, um, sample of meeting agendas, if you wrote one, and photos. And most people load this up with photos, but I encourage you not to use all photos. I also encourage you not to go and just do one photo session one afternoon and that's all you put in. If I see you in the same outfit in all 10 photos, then that's not going to get scored as high as I see it progressing throughout the year. Everything you put in there, whether it's a picture or drawing, whatever, I need to know it have, it have a caption and I need to know who, what, when, and where. Who's in the photo? What are y'all doing? When did this happen? And where did it happen? And you can have up to five pages in your record book um, for this. Now, if you add extras, that's fine for your documentation. I'll just tell you the first five pages are the ones the judge is going to judge. So keep that in mind. So what do you do before you last few things you need to do before you turn this record book in? You need to shake the book really good upside downwards and make sure nothing falls out. Once again, make sure everything's secure. You need to look over the directions one last time and the score sheet and make sure you have everything so we can give you the most points possible. Make sure it's in a binder. And if your handwriting is messy, last resort, resort, last resort is to rewrite it. All right, so that is my scoop. I am going to stop sharing and I'm gonna open the floor for any questions y'all may have. None, did I do an awesome job and nobody has any questions? Miss Robin does, yes ma'am. I can't hear you. Here we go. There we go. I figured it out. I'm on my little app. Okay. So, um, you know, we just haven't done a whole lot with our club and, uh, I guess it's because we can't meet live and I know you are having a lot of things online, but it seems like just having trouble connecting the kids to your sessions or having them willing to do your sessions. So without anything live we can't meet it's so hard to meet some it's so hard to complete some of the things that are required in the record book and um especially like anything to do with 4-h and I, I know, you know we're 
I will say that this year's book, we're expecting that. So don't not turn it in because you feel like there's not enough information because you weren't, we weren't, we did, weren't able to hold enough events. Everybody's book's going to be affected that way. So I, I will encourage you to go ahead. If, if you've been working on it to turn it in for this year's contest, because I think everybody's book, I mean, even my own child's book, we don't do horse record books. I will tell you that uh, my children do the meat goat project, but even their record book is drastically different than it has been in the past because of COVID. So we understand that. And that will go into um, the judging and they understand that as well. And I think this is an opportunity for you to maybe for next year, for 2021, hopefully we get good news and we can start meeting after the first year. But this is a good time for them to look at alternative ways to learn about horses. Also, I've, uh, we've gotten a lot of parents who have told us their child, because they haven't been in school, they've been doing home school at home, have had a lot of opportunity to work with the horse. So I encourage them to keep that record under project work is every time they go out there and work with that, with that horse, even if it's just going out there and brushing them, to write it down. That's something they're doing to work on their project. So that counts as well. Does that answer it somewhat? Yeah. Um, any help from you guys though, as far as the, the Facebook page or uh, events, I know you've, you've done a great job with linking us to regional and um, like North Carolina 4-H events. So if you will just keep that coming so I can continue to share it to our 4-H our Facebook page and just anything you can think of that's free or see that's free that would be entertaining or helpful um, for, you know, for youth. Yeah, no problem. For youth and 4-H. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, Caitlin Blackwell, I see that you have a question. Um, we were just more so worried, or like same, same, like do we still try to turn in the record book even though it's small for this year, or should we just wait to try to start fresh in the new year? I mean, I, if you want to, I would go ahead and do it, especially if you're a senior, because we're still, got, we still have, we're planning on trying to get scholarship money, so there'll still be that um, money for first and second place. I mean, we're still going to have the contest. I, I want to encourage you to still do it. Um, now, I will tell you, I encourage all of you to contact your 4-H agent in December about turning that record book in January 31st, because if county offices are not fully open, that might be difficult. So we understand that. So that deadline might be a little flexible this year because of that. But as long as you've contact your agent and let them know, hey, I've got a record book. It's due to you January 31st. Can we work out a way of getting it? Um, I think they'll be happy to work with you. And like I said, we'll be a little bit flexible with that, that deadline too. Okay, great. And then I do have one more request on the 4-H Facebook page. Are you able to like make it public so when you post something I can share it to my page unfortunately I'm not it's based on the uh, the guidelines that Clemson makes us put as a closed group and it won't let me share I've went I've contacted okay. Facebook even trying to get them to figure out a way but they won't let me I will say I know some of the other counties what they've just done is copied it and pasted it and even if you need to send me a message and say can you copy and paste it yeah I, did. Messenger, I can do that you know so um, unfortunately, I can't, but I'll help you as much okay. as you can. Just let me know. Absolutely. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks. Any other questions? Hey, Katie. Uh, this is Hannah Wilkins from Cherokee County. <clears throat> Man. Um, can you hear me? Uh-huh. Um, we we our group our numbers have kind of dwindled since all this is going on with COVID but um we and I'm losing originally you. thinking about doing the um record as a group because our um most of the kids in our county <clears throat> sorry can you still hear me yeah I can still hear you you're good hey can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. Um, most of the kids in our, our um, group are, do not have horses or don't have a lot of access to animals and horses. So we had discussed when we first started it back at the first of the year, possibly doing a um, 
a like a group project like so how would that look would each child just fill out their own book and then me as the leader maybe you know give them some information about the horse they could come visit it and stuff like that like when things open back up like how would that work yeah you, so that you would just involve you more could kids yeah, you could do if it. They do not have a horse. <laughs> you could do it that way, and you could provide them. We could just, you know, be like a club horse, and you could provide help them provide them with like feed information, health information, and all that at each meeting. And so they could just gradually add that to the record book throughout the year. So you could say, okay, this month our horse had a vet visit. The farrier came, and this, 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 and you know the feed cost was this much. And they can work at it as at a group. I will say we have had some club some success with club participation even if it's not a club horse um, just simply requiring the kids each club meeting and I know that's difficult right now with COVID but at each club meeting saying okay we're going to line 15 minutes for you to just sit and work on your record book so bring all your information that's happened since the last meeting and let's work on that record book um, and that's helped some clubs really bring up their record book numbers. But yeah, no, I would just, I would have what we call a club horse and, and you just help provide them with that horse specific information and everything else they work on independently. Okay, I'm going to ask you another really dumb question. Sure. So if they, if for some reason we sold the horse <laughs> and we purchased something else or we had it, something else, is it okay if you, if it's not just about one specific horse or is it better to be about one horse? No, we've had that happen before. That's perfectly fine. You can, you can even put that in there, you know, horse sold. All right, purchase cost of the new horse. And then you just would have two animal identification pages. So we would understand that, you know, the project was, the record book was halfway on this horse and then we transitioned to another horse. I, the only time I ever showed project um, income that was, that made my, pro, my project profit was the one year I sold a horse and I didn't buy a new one. And so we always laugh and said, that's the only time I profited in the horse project was the year I sold the horse and didn't buy a new one until the following year. <laughs> so that's totally fine. Any other questions? Hi, Katie. Oh. Rebecca, you cut out, I think. Hey, Katie. This, this is Rebecca Hudson here. Yes, ma'am. Can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Okay, yes, in the past, the books that have gone on to the state competition that were turned in, the portfolios, mm -hmm. those were always tight in the past. So, the so old, have y'all done away with doing that now? The, the portfolio is typed, but the record book is handwritten. So the portfolio can be typed. That's different. Okay. But the record book is handwritten. Okay. Gotcha. So at this point uh, now, how how is it? Um, how does for the four H go about videos of the record book, or they do both, or what? How does that work now? So if they're a senior four H, -er, they typically will continue doing a record book, but their portfolio is just every year they just add more information. So once they've got the meat of that portfolio done, then they just gradually okay. add to it. But the record book they keep doing every year um okay. if they want because they're separate contests um right. so they can okay. get i mean we've had i mean okay i think we did this year actually we had kids who won record book and then also won portfolio so that's good they got more money okay so who do you who do you who are you contacting to or where do you get the information on the portfolio because it's very similar to this um you can there was a time where it was just one record book. Right. So you can contact your county agent, or if we feel like the horse program needs one, I don't mind doing another one like tonight just on portfolios. So y'all let me know. I'll be happy to, to do it. I do the portfolio training typically. So. I would love to. Okay. Yep. Yeah, I'll there's been a lot of confusion. Our, our county agent... Yeah, our county agent did not know a whole lot about it. She didn't understand the difference, and I'm like... I go far enough back that I remember clearly it was just one type of book for the most part, 
that yeah. was turned in. <laughs> so there's a lot of confusion now with this having two. Yes, and I'll be, ha I, that's not a problem. So the difference is a, a record book is just one year. So it only focuses on one year. A portfolio is your whole 4-H career. Oh, right. So yes, the, it goes the, on and on and on. And on and on and on, right. And so that is why the record book ties in easily with portfolio because if you have all those record books, then it's easy to put a portfolio because you already have all that information. So um, that's why I think- Oh my God, yeah. Yeah, it's very key to do record books at an early age so that when you become a senior and want the big scholarships, you can fill up that portfolio. Because I have had to painfully sit with 4-H agents when I was gotcha. a county agent and work on five years worth of records that they didn't have. So um, I can definitely attest yeah. to that. But yeah, yeah I'll, be, done that. No I'll ha be happy to schedule a portfolio workshop for y'all and we'll most definitely, I'll let y'all know. It'll probably okay. be the okay. first of the year though. Um, because I don't want to do it during the holidays because I think that'll be difficult. But it'll probably be the first of the year, but I'll be happy to do a portfolio um, workshop. Okay. Hey, what, what's the due dates? What's the due dates on the portfolio and stuff? So portfolios are not due until May. The, the timeline on the portfolio and the due date. I think it's May 1st, if I okay. remember correctly. I'll That's have to look it up for sure. But yeah, it's not due until the spring. So okay. you've got time on those. I felt like tonight was important okay. for regular. And does that still run with the school year like it used to? So it just, it's, it's very confusing. So it just runs from the time you started 4-H until that record book's due in May. So uh -huh. um, there's no defined time because that's different for everybody. Um, but um, it's, so it's continuing. Right, right. So if I join in 2009 and then it goes to the May of 2021 for this year's book. Yeah, yeah. So okay. I will, okay. like I said, I'll schedule that. Right. I just in the past we had always updated it. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, I'm glad you pointed out the difference. So. Yeah, no problem. Okay, fantastic. Do we have any other questions? Alrighty. Okay. Hey, so. Katie, can you hear me? Yes. Hey, no, um, Katie, it's Heather. Can you hear me? Yes. Sorry, I'm driving. And unfortunately, I was working, so I couldn't hear 95% of that. So is this going to be like where I can access it? Um, yes. This is, you know, my first year being a club leader, so it would be nice if I could. Yeah, I have everything. recorded it, and I will share it with y'all. Okay, awesome. And I guess I really missed the boat because I thought the record book, I thought this was going to be telling us that the record book was going to be online. So that's what I've been telling my kids. So I'm like, great. I totally told them the wrong thing. So it's okay. Um, so some of that. The, so, no, you're right. Some of the other projects have gone to online. We have not. And the reason is, and I will be honest, yeah. Yeah. the reason is, is because the app is not mobile currently. It's currently not mobile. So you can't do it on a cell phone. The other thing is school computers, mm -hmm. because of their security settings, the online is called Zenbook. The online yeah. um, book won't pull up. And so I can't, I, when a lot of that's the only computer some kids have is their school one. If they can't do it on their school computer and they can't do it on a cell phone, I don't feel like we as the horse program can really push that until it has that capability. But no, currently it's still a physical book. Um, yeah. I'm not gonna, that for 2021 at least. Okay. All right. Yep. I appreciate it. No problem. Any other questions? All right. If not, I hope y'all have a great evening. Thanks for joining me tonight. Like I said, I'll, I'm going to stop the recording um, and I will share the recording once it's done downloading. Yep. Yes, ma'am. Katie, I had, I had one more question. Can okay. you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Yes. So, uh, who do these books get turned into when they're due? Do they, cause we don't have a county agent at the moment. You can turn them into your county office or Rebecca, but right now you can turn it, let me know and I'll work it out to pick them up from somebody. So just let the county gotcha. office, let me okay. know. So just say, Hey Katie, okay. I've got books. 
in, in the county, will you, you know, I'll either meet you, I'll get somebody to meet you. That's not a problem. Okay. All right. Fantastic. Thank You're welcome. Y'all have a good night. Thank you.